Hi, welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin, and you have tuned in to Signs, Wonders, Dreams, Prophecy, Episode 3. In this video, I will be sharing what my listeners have sent in, what they are hearing from the Lord. What is he saying about this time that we are in? Also, other confirming signs and uh confirmations of things that the Lord has spoken through me that you send in to me, and we'll be ending with signs and wonders photos of what the Father is showing you in the skies. All right, let's begin. This is really a fun one. Phil Z sent an article in with proof of a biblical story, uh, and I had a word that the Father would be uh, revealing things uh, there would be finds that would happen, discoveries that would prove supernatural things. Uh, this article was a proof of a story that we find uh, in the Bible where a single angel in one night killed 185,000 Syrian soldiers. Um, wow, uh, that's a pretty powerful story. <laughs> well, what happened was the Lord sent a messenger angel to fight an army of Assyrian soldiers that had come to conquer Jerusalem and to take over. It was a very, very uh, powerful king at that time. He had conquered every other nation that he had come against. And uh, the people of Jerusalem were crying out to the Lord for deliverance. And he heard their cry and sent this uh, angel, and he wiped out the Assyrian army. So uh, there's never really been any proof of that other than the biblical account. However, there is now archaeological evidence that has been unearthed that this battle actually happened. Using modern mapping techniques, archaeologist Stephen Compton claims he has found more evidence of the epic battle that it really did take place. He matched the site from a carving in King Sennacherib's palace. Now that's who the, the evil king was, who was coming uh, against Jerusalem. It was King Sennacherib. And he, or Sennacherib, or however, you know, it's really properly pronounced. Um, but anyway, at his palace, there is a, a picture that is carved of, a military encampment. So he took a, this um, archaeologist, took a picture of that, and he performed an archaeological survey of the site around Jerusalem, and he found pottery shards and discovered very sim similar topography to what was pictured in that carving. It had This site was abandoned 2,600 years ago. And this story took place between 26 and 2700 uh, years ago, and it has never been inhabited again. And you can imagine if that many deaths happened in one night, it probably has never been inhabited again. So uh, the source was dailymeal.com for that article. So thank you, Phil. That was really fascinating to me. I love archaeology. So uh, Mark F., who is now in heaven, sent, this was sent in by his wife. This is something that he heard in an encounter in 2011. Okay, that's a number of years ago. It's an astounding vision of what we are now facing in this day that we are in. Now, you're going to find it pretty stunning uh, what he was shown would take place in the future. Now, I do want to say that this is a revealing of the enemy's plans, and God does that, but he doesn't do it so we'll be afraid and go hide. He does it so we will take authority as sons and daughters of the kingdom and not allow all of these things to take place. So this is what Reverend Mark Odin Fitzgerald heard in the year of 2011 on October the 25th. He said, I was talking to my father about the promises he had made to my wife and me as we worked in his kingdom. They served the Lord 
for many, many years, and his wife still does. Promises of revival, mercy flowing to the hurting, miracles and provision for his work. I was taken up above the Northern Hemisphere. I had traveled in the spirit many times before, but what I saw was terrifying and accelerating this time. There were fires worldwide, but enormously over the USA, inland, and Hawaii. The USA's uh, southern border was an open breach. Thousands were flooding over America's southern border, and we know that that has come to pass. These were mainly men with kidnapped children. These men I knew in the spirit were Arabs, Chinese, Russian, and gangs from Latin America. They were crossing with all kinds of armament. They had plans to destroy Americans and the cities. The bigwigs had paid for their travels to and in the USA and the New World Order. These bigwigs thought that they owned the USA and the world. They did not see God standing up to bring his justice to the world. I saw them enter every state in the USA. They targeted California and New York City harder than any other areas. They had plans to kill, torture, and spread terror. Just a great group of people. They planned large explosions in 10 to 12 major cities in the USA. I saw this marked out on the map. USA government officials provided travel, credit cards, and housing for this evil throng. Now, in 2011, that sounded like a fairy tale. It has happened in our day. They hated Christians, patriots, Jews, preachers, teachers, and the very elite that brought them. I saw the atrocities that they did. The explosives were already in place wherever needed, where they were assigned to detonate the explosives. The elite had thoroughly planned this destruction. I'm glad God has more thoroughly planned their destruction. During parts of this, leaders tried to force the population to to stay in their houses for a second time. He didn't know about 2019 that God is so good to reveal ahead of time what is going to take place, what the enemy is going to try so that we have plenty of time to counteract. Well, anyway, so for a second time, uh, fear was everywhere, but during this drastic time of great fear, anxiety, and uncertainty, the church in America stood up and said, not this time. When I saw this, he says, I did not fully know what the church meant by not this time. But then he did uh, realize what it was referring to. He said China believed it would own the West Coast of the USA. Russia thought it would own east of the Mississippi. But the Muslims planned on taking over every part of America, the great Satan. There was a massive separation between what was dark and light. Wow, are we seeing that? The bride of Christ stood up in white. She was reaching out without fear. She stood in his holy power and loved as the Father loves. This will not be a denomination, but a blood-washed saints in unity. There was a strange sickness. I knew in my spirit it was the second time for lockdowns and strange sicknesses. Many were dying, but more were dying of fear. That's our job to counteract that fear. Christ Church stood up and the Holy Spirit performed miracles, signs, and wonders through the church. It was a time of great darkness and fear, but also unlimited power, strength, protection, and joy for the servants of the Most High. Wow, is that incredible. Okay, so we know from that what we are to pray and counteract, nullify, take the death sting out of their plans and turn them back so that they boomerang onto the darkness. So thank you for sending uh, that in. That was an incredible revelation that your husband received. All right, Terry B. had a testimony about speaking in tongues. 
uh, her prayer language. And this is from the video I just did with Patty Tycro called What is Coming? So she, uh, Patty shared powerful prophetic words. If you have not heard that video, please tune into that. At the end, we were uh, just waiting on the Lord, uh, praying through words of knowledge. And um, I just felt led to pray for people to receive the gift of speaking in tongues because it is such a powerful gift. It's the only one in the whole Bible that says build you up personally. Otherwise, the gifts are just to flow through us. They are not for us. Uh, and the gift of tongues, if it's released in a church service, it requires an interpretation so that people can understand what is being uh, said. If you are using it to pray for someone or to pray to the Lord, uh, it is. it does not require an interpretation. Uh, so there is a, a gift of tongues that is released in the church. And then there is a private gift of tongues. That is a powerful prayer language that the Holy Spirit gives to us. So she says, hi, Patty, Diana, just a short message. In 2018, I fell. And as a result of a brain injury, I lost my ability to speak. I spent four years in speech therapy. I could pray. In tongues, it bypasses your brain. If this isn't proof to you, I don't know what is. It comes out of your spirit, not your brain. She said, it just flowed out of me. At first, I wasn't sure I was actually speaking in tongues until I prayed for someone. The following, the following week, she reported her healing. I later found out that someone who heard me pray said it was so powerful. You could just feel the anointing. When I finished praying, I couldn't speak any better, but I knew I could pray in the spirit. I didn't have to think about it. Today, I'm totally restored in my brain and speech. God gave me back the years the locust, canker worm, and palmer worm had eaten. I haven't shut up since. <laughs> I told her I really laughed when I read that. That is awesome. I wouldn't either. <laughs> I would be praising God and thanking him for my speech and also for the amazing gift of praying in tongues. It's praying exactly what the Holy Spirit puts in your spirit, and you're just giving voice to it. it changes frequencies in the atmosphere. It's amazing. Like if you're downtown... You see a couple fighting somewhere, you just start praying like quietly in the spirit and you'll watch shh, the situation just diffuse. It's a powerful gift. All right, Beatrice Sam sent a very encouraging dream that she had. She said, I'm not sure if I'd shared this dream I had on October 28th of 1923, of 2023, not 1923. <laughs> it seemed as if my children and she had three of them, and I were driving on a decline in a mountain highway. We were following another car as we drove into a rather sharp curve. As we did, all of a sudden, there were beautiful, brilliant, bright yellow flowers falling all over the road. There were so very many, many flowers on the road, and it was quickly covered. I shouted, stop, stop. As we slowed and came to a stop, the car in front of us did not stop. So it went over the side of the road, landing on its passenger side. But thankfully, it was not a deep gully, so they opened the windows. We quickly got out of our car and started running toward them. As we did, all of a sudden, I was observing the scene below from above. What I saw were the beautiful yellow flowers were embracing us as we ran toward the overturned car. As we reached the passengers and were helping them out, the beautiful, brilliant yellow flowers embraced them as well. Glory to God. She says, the glory of God that is coming, I believe, and has been prophesied will be incredible, touching all men, women, and children on the face of the earth, for his glory will fill the whole of the earth. We will see amazing, incredible, some never seen before, signs, wonders, and miracles to the glory of God. Amen. And wow, she says. I want to mention that uh, 
yellow as also representing God's glory, but it also is hope. Um, and that is a great dream of hope for us. That not only are we going to be blessed with the glory, but we will be able to minister it to those in need. All right. And Anon from my blog had this word from the Lord. This is confirmation to a word the Lord told me a week ago. And this was uh, my journal entry that was fire. So what the Lord said to her was fire. Fire is coming. My throne shall be a throne of fire. My throne shall be like the burning bush on fire, but never consumed. My throne consumes. My word echoes through this nation. My word goes forth and does not come back void. Yes, the evil now lose territory, for it was never theirs to begin with. The earth is mine. The earth is my mainstay. The earth is my witness of my love. My fire shall consume you. My grace is a burning fire. You will learn how to walk in my fire. I will teach you how to burn and not be consumed. You will show up with fire. You shall not faint. My hand will lead you. Blessed be the word of the Lord. Wow, that is powerful. All right. Marla M. Uh, sent this confirmation of a word from my journal called By the Dawn's Early Light. She said, what a confirmation. I had just looked out my window this morning and saw our flag flying in the wind. I was inspired to sing the national anthem. Minutes later, I opened your post, the dawn's early light. Wow. <laughs> so cool. Joanne G.H. had a confirmation of the word I received on reversing the curse. So this is what she found by looking up um, Strong's 780. And what that turned out to be was Ararat, which is the holy mountain where the ark landed when the waters receded from the flood that Noah and his family were saved in the ark. Well, the meaning of Ararat is the curse reversed. Wow. <laughs> Jackie F. and Kathy G. both sent me a video clip of a word from the Lord through Pastor Kent Christmas on June 30th of 2024. So what they sent it to me because it confirmed a couple of things that I had heard from the Lord. And one was the arrow of the Lord has been released. Oh my goodness. How many arrow clouds have we seen? And then we had that word about the, uh, all the enemy arrows that they plan to shoot at us. But the Lord says, wait till they see my arrow that's coming for them. And also he mentioned in this word, the Lord is reversing the curse. Wow. Pretty cool. Janice C received the names of her two warrior hosts. Uh, so she said, as of today, I hadn't heard the names of my two warrior hosts that you imparted to us about two months ago. I had asked several times. So I was sitting on my back deck. This is a lesson and keep asking, keep pressing in. Sitting quietly, I reminded him that I had received them by faith through you, Diana. I reminded him that his word says that if we call upon him, he will answer us. I told him that I believed that my two special warrior hosts were here, but that it was very important to me that I could call them by name out of respect. Then a thought in my brain, or was it dropped into my spirit? Anya? And David came to me, Anya, David, she recognized, but she said, did I hear that right? Is, is that even a name? So she went right away into the office and looked up the meaning of Anya. Now you have to keep in mind that they have two uh, beautiful, beautiful cats. One is named Amazing Grace, and they call her Maisie for short. And then they have Michael Angelo who is actually named after the archangel, Michael, and is happens to be one of my top fans. And it just happens that I have a picture of him in the Sights of Wonders photos. So you'd be looking for that. So Anya is Russian and translates to grace. 
So remember her cat's name. And it's also associated with some Hebrew roots, meaning gracious, beloved, and David itself means beloved. So, wow, so special. I mean, tailor-made for her. And every time somebody has uh, spoken about the names of their warrior host, you can just see how God fitted them exactly to what they're called to do and who they are. Uh, Cheryl C. sent this really special testimony about rainbows in her garden. And he did say we would be seeing rainbows where we had never seen rainbows before. She said, I've been praying over my garden and asking God for an abundance of produce that I plant among the flowers that I also plant. I have too much shade in my backyard with huge trees, so I have to hide them behind the flowers in the front yard. <laughs> I started having rainbows over the whole garden everywhere I looked, and I still do. I know that's God's doing. Yes, water and sunlight create rainbows, but not everywhere around the entire garden. I also had a remarkable amount of produce after I started praying. I love that God cares about even the little things when we pray. He's such a wonderful God. Oh, he sure is. All right, DDC sent this confirmation of a word about us being his witnesses. Once The one sister that is dearest and partly raised me, you know, she's talking about her natural sisters, did not want to listen to me of your words, Diana. She said, I have my Bible and we will just agree not to talk politics. And, you know, bless their hearts. They really mean well. But if you are really a student of the word, you will know that one third of the word is dreams, visions, and supernatural encounters. You don't think that are important to the father to have a whole third of the scriptures devoted to that? Yeah. But when we're blind, we don't know we're blind. So we love people and just be there for them. So Dee Dee says, I do feel comfort in the fact that my husband of 21 years and one of my daughters are two that listen and partner with me in knowing God is turning up the heat and evil is defeated. I had secretly used God's gifting of healing hands and smile as I see people getting better, but also Oh, I secretly used God's gift of healing hands and smile as I see people getting better. But I also give him a thank you when others notice. Not so long ago, I had been guided to raise my hand and ask that a portal be opened to let angels of God through to fight the evil that is all around. I then heard the father tell me, you will be of a witness to me. You will be of witness. I was honored. Silly me thought at times that maybe that means he will take me now. But no, he said, no, I will speak of my testimony and I will get to see more. Your words of the father speaking of witnessing answered everything God and the Holy Spirit have been telling me recently. Confirmation and distinguishing between the father's voice once in a while and the Holy Spirit's guidance daily is a beautiful feeling. <laughs> All right. This is really uh, an especially uh, precious um, uh, confirmation. What well, I don't know what to call it. It's a wonder. It's a sign that Nelly uh, sent me. So my last video was turning up the heat in July, uh, where I share my the prophetic words I've heard during the last week. And she said she heard the wind come up in that video at about the 16 minute and nine second mark. And at that point, I was praying that he would fill us. And she said this was not, and I've said to her, this was not a natural sound. All the windows in my sunroom were closed. There's too many noises outside, you know, bugs and birds and lawnmowers. And so I always, you know, close my windows. Um, and so I I opened up that video and, and went to the 1609 mark. And as I am praying, I suddenly hear 
the sound of a wind in the background. It's not a really loud sound, but it is definitely there as a confirmation that he was fulfilling my request to fill us with his strength. I mean, that was just so powerful to me um, to hear that confirmation he was giving us that he hears, he sees, he knows, he is acting on our behalf. Now, Nellie said, I see you wanted to know when I heard the wind in your clip. <laughs> I heard this sound right from the beginning, but in the section when you said, we should just pause and present ourselves to the Father, and you prayed, fill us, it got even louder. After that, it got quieter again. It's at minute 1609. <laughs> so I encourage you to go and check that out for yourself. It's pretty cool. All right. Kathy G had confirmations of my eagle encounter and also that buildings and monuments would be collapsing because I've heard that a number of times from the father. So she had two confirmations regarding my eagle encounter. Wow. What an amazing encounter you had. I thought I'd share two confirmations. Johnny Enlow had an episode on Elijah's dreams on May 13th called The Eagles Are Coming, where he shared a clip of the eagles from the Lord of the Rings movie, saying that the Lord is letting us know that the eagles are coming, signifying that angelic help is on the way. In the Lord of the Rings, when the eagles show up, typically when the battle has gotten very intense, it signifies things are going to be wrapping up because they deal devastating blows to the enemy that's attacking uh, the people of light in the Lord of the Rings. He also shared a prophetic word. The king's timeline has been secured, meaning he said that the enemy's attempt to change the timeline, do a reset, has been stemmed absolutely the enemy has failed. She said, as I watched some of the clips from the Lord of the Rings again, I noticed that these eagles have brown heads, like in your experience, not the white-headed bald eagles that we you know, normally see around our nation. Um, so that was really exciting to me. Okay, and then she said your encounter was also a long-awaited confirmation to a vision I had about two or so years ago. Although I did not see, experience the eagle part or the heavenly visit part, I did see pagan monuments, statues, icons, and strongholds dedicated to darkness, darkness places like C-E-R-N, collapsing. I saw them coming down, crumbling or being swallowed up, destroyed all at once, all over the world, not just America. It seemed to be happening in one day. And I remembered how the Lord said in his word that he would do this in one day, which has been confirmed through several prophetic voices. I don't think I've heard other prophets thus far referencing this happening like this, though they have pointed to a one-day event of some sort. I held on to that vision, kept it my, to myself, as I wasn't sure people were ready for it two years ago. But as you shared your encounter, I sense that many are ready for it now. I'm so looking forward to God's great display of his power so that the whole world will know who is the greatest of all. Now, that is just so amazing. Um, it's something that we need to be really encouraged about because I do remember, I don't remember where, someone said that they saw buildings and mon monuments falling and that people thought we were under attack, but it was the hand of the Lord doing it all at the same time. So that's a confirmation to what Kathy saw. Okay, I wanted to let you know um, that I have a transcript of the communion time that we did together at the end of our very first Signs, Wonders, Dreams, and Prophecy, that episode one, which was on June 27th, and that is up on my blog now. So uh, someone had asked if uh, we would put uh, a transcript of what I shared 
And you're welcome to use that for your personal communion time, for communion with your husband or a small group, whatever you, you know you would like to do with it. Um, I was just free flowing in the Holy Spirit. And um, it, that's just how I do a communion. And it never gets old. It's always fresh from the Holy Spirit. Um, so anyway, uh, you're free to use that. Um, and just to, to let you know, YouTube does supply a transcript of the videos so that you can actually go through and read what I said. However, they don't really do punctuation and sentences. It's all just kind of a mishmash. So in order to get this transcript, my amazing uh, Patty Tigro assistant, she transcribed it for me. So that was a great blessing. So, all right. We are ready for signs and wonders videos. Videos. I'm always saying that. We're doing a video. Yes, but these are photos. <laughs> All right. Let's get our share screen up here. And let me get this up. And I happen to know that is the very last picture. That I, okay. And we're going to start here with Penny C, who saw a beautiful pink glory cloud. And uh, this is also a picture of dark to light. And this cloud, it was over the skies of Wisconsin. She said, this isn't the sun. This is east of the sunset. So she does not know what could have created this pink glory cloud other than the hand of the Lord. Isn't that awesome? Let's see, I was going to share this at the very end, but um, I would have to go all the way back here. This is actually me. <laughs> um, this uh, happened today. I did an interview with John Redenbow and Ash West, and it is a powerful, powerful uh, session that we did together. I mean, the revelations that that the Father is bringing to us are astounding, really astounding. And so when I finished that video, I needed to run do a quick errand and I got in my car and lo and behold, at the end of my street, this is a rainbow cloud. Now you've sent in lots of pictures that I've gotten to see them, but I've never seen one in real life. And it was just like the father is saying, just stamping it with his covenant promises, his goodness, and just saying, thanks for partnering with me. Then there's also this arc, this, this band that showed up, and then these glory um, rays coming out from the sun. And then after I took the picture, I noticed there are faces here. And they look like ancient, like prop, ancient prophets or the patriarchs, there's two faces here, and they are looking up at the rainbow cloud, and they are a witness to what the Father is doing. That is just so, so special. So Kathy Kay saw a rainbow host, hosts flying together. So these are actually two different hosts, and they are, here's a giant wing and one over here. And they are flying together and they have these beautiful rainbow colors. And this um, bluey orby thing looks like one of their heads. So that's a pretty cool picture. Diane Z uh, shared this host picture of a host and of a white horse. And then this white horse is holding back these bad guys that are over here. This one's a little bit light, so a little bit hard to see, but uh, it's a very powerful picture. A lot is going on in that. Deb D sent this from Florida, and it is a face in the sky. And I'm going to leave it up to you. Do you think this is a good guy or a bad guy looking out? So here's the eyes here. They look a little beady to me, but, you know, we have fierce hosts who are warring for us. So you can uh, post in the comments what you think. Deb D also sent us this one, and it is God's glory. And um, nope, it's a face in the sky. She's got, no, this is God's glory. And a lion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so here's the glory fill in the sky. And right here, here is the brow and the mane and the lion's eyes. And here is uh, the nose and then that, you know, that parting that comes down and the mouth. So that was a huge lion of Judah in the sky for her. Wow. Very amazing. Okay, I love this one. And C sent this one in. So the day she sent this in, both Johnny Enlow and I had mentioned the numbers 333 and the how often we see them. And Anne asked for a, concern, a confirming sign for that. It came on a bottle of tomato sauce in Australia. <laughs> the three threes. And there you have it. He is... I love, love, love his sense of humor. He is so wonderful. What a good, good father we have. Denise sent us this. It is uh, a face. You'll see the hairline here in the forehead, the nose. And it is that this face is looking up into the sky. And it has praying hands, which is very, very special. And um, she felt like I was turned toward the area where her son lives. So that was very special to, to her. Uh, Catherine B. sent us this powerful picture. It is a shelf, excuse me, a shelf cloud. And it also pictures dark to light. And this was over the skies of North Carolina. So here you see the light. And then there's this big shelf. And it's got this ray of glory light going through it. So very powerful move. And Eve H. sent us this one. It is a sky full of hosts. She must have been uh, decreeing and declaring and praying. And the hosts are responding and they're arising to do the word of the Lord. Very good. And this picture is by Jackie C. It's a rainbow cloud, a rainbow clouds over the skies of Vermont. Oops, I got the wrong one. That's the second picture. Let's see. Oh, I wonder if I missed it. I might have. Hopefully we'll come upon it here, but I, I could have missed uh, downloading it. Uh, it's a great picture. We'll show it next time if I did miss it. Uh, this one by Jackie is this this huge host that appeared in the sky. And this guy is on the move like Superman. So here's his head, here's a wing, and here's the body. And he is zipping along. <laughs> Deb D sent this one over the skies of Florida. It's a very huge dog. And she felt like it was a faithful watcher. And that's over the skies of Florida. You see a little open mouth here, little nose. Kind of looks like a poodle-ish kind of dog, but maybe not. <laughs> but I, I do, you know, people are seeing a lot of dogs. And sometimes it just represents people's pets who are in heaven waiting for them. But sometimes I do believe they are watchers and they are just as faithful as our companion dogs. Bonnie R. sent this amazing picture. It is a huge portal that appeared over New Hampshire, and it seems to be releasing frequencies. You see that? So there are obviously things from heaven coming into this realm through this portal and affecting the very atmosphere. Lana J. sent, Lana or Lana sent this beautiful picture of glory rays. And they're not just coming out here. They're coming out all over. It's uh, incredible. Uh, Corne V, uh, and he lives in Australia, sent these uh, uh, next two pictures are from him. These are like really strange clouds. And, and we kind of both decided they were holy smoke in this picture. I mean, it's just a release of Holy Spirit that we can see. And he sent this one in as well. And you'll see again these columns 
uh, that are streaking across the sky. They're kind of like conduits. So it makes me think maybe hosts or something are being sent through these conduits into Australia. Uh, Here's what the Sydney News reported about these clouds. They said they had never seen these type of clouds before. There were three clouds seen for three hours and stretching 30 kilometers. We have our three, three, three again. And then he mentioned Joel 2, uh, verse 30. I will show signs and wonders displaying my power in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. Wow. The next day, he's crying out for justice over his nation, and God has him read my post, Unjust Judges, Unrighteous Decisions, and it had 333 hearts on it. You can't make this stuff up. This doesn't just happen. This is God's hand letting us know he has heard us. Wow. All right. Thanks, uh, Corne, for those amazing photos. Um, Massimo sent these rainbow clouds, and it even could be a rainbow host, because I can see like a face here and an arm coming up. So I think this might be a rainbow host, and you can see an eye there. And then there are, these are also look like smaller hosts to me that are zipping along here. So that is an amazing, amazing uh, photo. Beautiful. And Deb D sent us this one from Florida. It is a soldier that she saw with a rainbow rod of God's power. Uh, Isn't that cool? So here is the rainbow rod right here. And this isn't as clear as I would like, but there are eyes here, and then there's a head here. I love all the rainbow sightings. It's amazing. Daisy A sent us this watcher face, or host, and that is over New York, and we like to hear that. That's uh, a place we like to hear that the hosts are very active. Let me move this along here. And we are on to Tracy D sent this to us. And it is hosts in the skies over Honolulu, Hawaii. So we know that that place is in the Father's heart as well. Look at all those powerful, powerful. Kathy C. sent this uh, dragon or a serpent head, but the thing that we both loved about it, it has a big black eye. (laughs) Oops. I guess it met up with somebody stronger than it. Um, Grace C. sent this, and it is a host blowing a shofar and uh, releasing a host of frequencies. And then there's also a host beneath with a drawn sword, and there's a quiver with arrows. And this all happened over Florida. It reminds me of Amy Vega's pictures. So here's the head of the host, its wings, its body, and here's the shofar. And you'll see right here all the frequencies that are being released. And then here's the drawn sword that is being carried along. Um, and then up here, I mean, can I pull this down? No, not really. Um, right here, I think, let's see, is that the quiver or is that this, an arrow? And then the quiver is up here. Um, unfortunately, it's a little bit covered by by these things, but um, as a very powerful picture, very busy. <laughs> um, Gwen O sent us this one. Did I miss some? Let me go back here. That was this. That was this. And Grace and Gwen. I just, sometimes I lose my place and sometimes they just appear uh, in, in a place where I'm not expecting them to. So this is a giant watcher that Gwen spotted and also a bad guy. 
And then there is a glory cloud shining on the good. So that's pretty cool. So here's the bad guy over here. Here's this huge watcher, does not look worried. And then we see glory coming out and, and shining down. Good to know that he's on our side. Gwen sent this one as well. It is a watcher and a host wing appearing in her skies over Virginia. So here's the watcher right here. You can see the eyes and here's the head. And then this beautiful host wing here, streaking through the sky. Uh, Cindy M. sent us this, and it is an eagle with a raised wing against the glory sky. And this was taken over Florida. So you can see this beautiful, beautiful glory sky. Here's the head of the eagle, his beak. And here is his wing. It's just like raised into the glory. That is really powerful. Jackie M. sent us this really, really special uh, photo that happened at sunset and a glory cross appeared in the sky above some beautiful pink glory clouds. That's It's just a beautiful picture. Jackie M. sent this one as well. It is hosts streaking through a fire sky like fighter jets. And these were taken over Maryland. So pretty cool. So you can see these jets here. Those are our fighter jet angels <laughs> flying through the glory. Uh, Beth and Jack S. sent this one, and it is an eagle with glory streams and taken over North Carolina, um, somewhere at the coast. Uh, so you see the glory here, and here's the eagle head, and it is a white bald eagle. So here's the head, here's the eye, the beak, and then coming around here. Uh, that's pretty incredible uh, photo. The glory is streaming from that eagle. Thank you, Father. Next, we have Michelle M. Uh, this picture from California is a pink uh, sky full of pink glory and host wings. So we have this beautiful pink glory. And then all through the sky, we see some host wings. Uh, Dana sent us this. Her name's spelled T-E-I-N-E, -E, but it's pronounced Dana. And she sent this um, sky full of hosts again. There's also arrow hosts in this picture. And, and um, this was, there is a story behind this. I don't want to miss it. There's a glory arrow striking the earth in this. Can you see this? This this arrow is just lit on fire and you can see its trajectory. It's coming to hit the earth. Now here are the hosts, many, many hosts in the sky. Now this was taken, oh, and the orbs, I forgot to mention, there are orbs that appear all over in this picture. Um, and orbs often represent the host or angels. So um, where this was taken was over Grass Valley, California, and it is where the Church of Satan started. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? And God is displaying his glory there. Wow, I love that. This is from Brett and Janice C., taken in the skies over Canada. And Brett and Janice are the parents of Michelangelo and Maisie, the cats. So. They are powerful prayer warriors, and they have the most amazing hosts that appear over their home. Uh, so they're just um, incredible. Um, so you can see these here, and they're up here. And then right here, there's an arrow host that is flying uh, with great power in that direction. The other hosts seem to be moving the other way. And I often see that uh, with arrow hosts, that they can be going uh, in all directions for us. Amy V sent us this rainbow host wing. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. Um, and she felt like it was speaking of covenant promise, and this was taken over Florida. 
So this whole wing is a rainbow of this host. So amazing. Deb D sent this. It uh, is an arrow cloud that appeared in the sky uh, over her home in Florida. So you can see that. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, Sarah P sent us this. And she saw Jesus in the skies. And this was over a DJT rally that this happened. So he is appearing in the sky right here. Hair, eye, nose, beard. So said, I'm here. I'm with you. <laughs> Lynn D sent us this one. It is, again, a sky full of glory hosts. Um, it's the power of these hosts as they are moving through the skies is very, very incredible. Very awesome. Lynn also sent us this one. It is a warrior shield host. So this is just a giant shield. This host is flying as protection over a home, an area, a city, whatever, wherever it's needed. Sandra G sent us this amazing uh, picture and it came from a Facebook website and it is like a totally unusual rainbow. And didn't he tell us we're going to see unusual things? Well, we sure are. Um, this it's it's almost like a triple rainbow, although we don't see complete rainbows, um, just sections of them. And we see again the dark to light. Amazing. Kathy K sent us this pink glory clouds, pink glory clouds that appeared in the skies of Minnesota. So thank you, Minnesota. I love these pink glory clouds. Amazing. Uh, Lindy sent us, whoops, where am I? That was the one I already did. Oh, okay. I just need to move. Moving along. We have Grace C. And she sent us a feather light host. Uh, well, not one. This is a whole sky of feather light hosts. And these, again, are taken over Florida. So you see them here. They're, this is a whole rank of them. A whole column of them are moving out. That's pretty powerful. Grace sent us this one as well. It was an electric battle between dark and light. And you can see it. Do you see right here? There's an electric electricity and it's just coming out all over. And the darkness is, is trying to, to fight it, but it cannot fight that light. It is being dispelled. Uh, this one is by Paul K. And this was from Switzerland. And these are glory clouds shining through the darkness. So you can see there's a pretty heavy sky of darkness there, but you, the, the glory light just shines through and it's beginning to reflect onto the earth. So very cool photo. Deb D sent this one um, and it is a sky full of pink glory hosts over Florida. So awesome. I love these. Um, they're very powerful. Just hosts, 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 carrying beautiful Glory light. All right. Here is my one of my top fans. This is Michelangelo, belonging to Brett and Janice C. And he is a faithful fan. I mean, I don't know how many pictures they've sent me so that I really know this isn't just a one-off thing. He comes into the room and watches my videos. Well, he's named after an archangel. Of course he would be tuned to the spiritual realm. And here he is watching uh, Patty and I, as we're doing our video. So Patty, you have a top fan too. Uh, this is an incredible picture sent in by Joanne G.H. Uh, Javier Milou sent this in. And it was like a once in a lifetime photo opportunity for him. It is the moon caught in an eye arch. So, wow, that doesn't look like God's eye looking on his creation. <laughs> wow. Ruth D. sent this beautiful picture. It is a moon caught in the rainbow over Australia. 
Isn't that amazing? Wow. Just a beautiful, beautiful picture. Uh, Joanne sent this one as well. It's a glory portal over New York. And there's heavy warfare uh, being involved in the skies here. You see this dark, dark, ominous cloud. But look at the glory. It's shining through, shining above. It's shining below. It is opening a portal right through the darkness and descending on New York, who desperately needs the glory of the Lord. <laughs> Uh, Joanne sent us this one as well. It is uh, just a beautiful picture of glory light and a rainbow cloud over New York. So you'll see the rainbow edges here, the glory. And right here, I see like a Holy Spirit, tiny Holy Spirit dove uh, in that picture. So that's pretty special. Uh, this is from Joanne GH as well. And it is a glory waterfall spilling out over New York. Just so, again, dark to light. And then you'll see just this waterfall of glory coming out of that open portal of light. Wow. So cool. Josephine P. sent this one in. It is a dark sea creature that you can see right here. There's his nose. Um, and he is spewing darkness. See that? He's really, it's yucky stuff. But he is exposed by the light. Look at all this light that is coming to expose him. And the light is much greater. And this was taken over Australia as well. Isn't that interesting how the father will, he'll just pick a theme as he groups pictures? Because I just share them as they come in. So he's the one organizing who sends what, when, and from where. And we've seen many from Australia. Australia is on his heart. His promises are yes and amen to them. We're going to end with Violet Kay's picture. And uh, her ring camera actually took this uh, photo. And right here in the sky, for absolutely no reason, there is a cross. Just astounding. I love how he does things. Do you think a couple angels like got assigned to get little, little handfuls of the clouds and form a cross so Violet could see that? Um, he's just that special and that wonderful. <laughs> well, this has been so fun to be with you and to be sharing what you have heard from the Father and what you have seen in the skies as he speaks to us, as he encourages us, as he tells us, hold the line, I really am coming. Just because it looks dark doesn't mean my light isn't right on the way to overpower it. And that is what we're going to see. All right, let's end with a word of prayer, shall we? Father, thank you. Um, I've so enjoyed this time being with your beautiful, wonderful, amazing people, your army of light that I am so proud to be standing shoulder to shoulder with in this battle of dark to light. And we thank you, our great commander, that you give us our marching orders and that you cover and protect us and that you have sent your warrior hosts and angels to partner with us in this battle. And we thank you that your promises are yes and amen to us, that we will have the victory and walk into the newness of your reset, the kingdom age. And we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, thank you all for joining me. It's been my great delight to be with you. Until we meet again, may you be blessed with his peace, his grace, his great glory. And keep looking for those rainbows and signs and wonders. Until we meet again. Bye for now.